much. Okay. Just barely. Just, just barely. All right. We heard something on the broadcast last night on the radio side where there's been progress compared to about two years ago with the <coughs> kids and uh, emerging for camps like these. At the very end of this, so what are you satisfied with what's come together so far about this team? Well, you know, I mean, it's obviously, you know, you get to the last day of camp and there's a lot of work that's been done. Uh, the focus is on what's coming ahead. Um, you know, we, you know, you brought up the young guys. We had a lot of young guys that had good camps. Uh, we've got a couple of young guys that are going to, you know, that have earned spots, and that's the key is that, you know, they've earned their way, they've, uh, they've worked for it, um, and, you know, we feel like they're ready to help us. And now, you know, they've got to fit into the mix, uh, you know, of a, of a group of returning veterans and, uh, and be part of uh, what gives us success. In the end, why was it so deserving to see Ty Cartier and Joey DeCord make this team out of the game? Well, each, I mean, each pathway has come through the American Hockey League. Um, you know, Joey's obviously, you know, his pathway is a little bit different as a goaltender and that maturation process. Uh, but, you know, Cart's coming through last year, did it, uh, hey, he did it the, you know, the old fashioned way in terms of, you know, earning what he, uh, what he got in Coachella Valley, earning his opportunities and continuing to grow. You know, and he showed that right from day one here, early in, you know, rookie camp. That was pretty apparent that he had also had a good summer and, and uh, was ready to compete for a spot. And, you know, as I said, with Joey, again, coming through last year uh, for a goaltender and his pathway, his ability to continue to grow his game, help us along the way, like he, you know, was able to do last year was really important in the process. But most importantly for both of those two guys, you have to come to camp over the last 17 days and you have to earn a spot, and they both did that. Did Reichert his evaluation of him change over the last two games? Did he kind of decelerate a little bit? Not at all. Uh, I thought Riker had an outstanding camp. Uh, we're, we're extremely happy with where he's at and um, and what he did, his body of work through training camp. The growth in uh, in one year, I mean, I can I can go back incrementally over the last couple of years, but, you know, just to keep it to, you know, his growth as a pro uh, in over the last 12 months has been uh, outstanding. Um, he's done all of the right things. He's dug in with the people that are there to help him. Um, and again, during training camp, uh, the last 17 days after he had a good rookie camp, you know, his 17 days were good. Um, there's no easy, there's no easy decision with Riker. Um, he's a guy that uh, he's putting himself in a great spot. Uh, the you know the great thing for him is to be able to uh, go back to the American Hockey League, pick up where he left off, um, expect to be one of the best players in that league and then hold himself to that level and continue to grow. Hey Dave, uh, we obviously saw a fans learning the game. Can you talk a little bit about the AHL and the fact that you're probably not going to only use 22 guys this season? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, you know, I think that, that goes without saying. Um, you know, that was even part of our conversations. We got down to 27, 28 guys, and most likely the list is going to be longer than that even. Uh, you know, in terms of, you know, the guys that are going to have an impact on our season um, and to be ready when that opportunity comes. So, you know, we're starting, you know, we're starting right now with 22. Um, we all know there's there's going to be, you know, other other individuals uh, at every position that are going to contribute to our team this year. Is the timeline still looking the same for Vince Dunn as it was yesterday? Uh, he had a good practice today, um, so I don't foresee anything changing, but... Uh, you know, we take it one day at a time. So he, he had a good day today. We won't go any further than that. We'll, we'll see where he's at. We're going to take a day off away from the rink tomorrow. We'll come back and we practice on Monday, and that'll uh, square up our mindset for, for where we're at heading into Vegas on Tuesday night. What's the message to Shane going to Coachella Valley today? What do you hope he gets out of his time down there? Um, feed off of the progress that he's made. I, again, um, you know, he made progress, and we see that at every every level of his game. Um, we also, you know, we had a real clear and plain discussion in terms of the areas that we want them to see them focus on um, and that the coaches and the development staff will be focusing on with him uh, in the American Hockey League. And um, again, great opportunity. Feel good about his growth. Um, be, you know, be, be uh, excited to dig in uh, and continue to grow and, and push the envelope in the areas that we're asking him. Um, and, and work to, you know, get back to the National Hockey League level. How beneficial is it knowing that you have such a good coaching staff at the AHL level that you can know it's going to work with those players? Kind of uh, 
it's, it's critical. Development is, is at every level. That's everybody in the organization involved. Dan and his staff do an outstanding job in terms of building a culture there where players are, you know, they, they feel free to go out and play and mistakes are part of the game, um, but there's accountability that comes along with it. Um, you know, and there's, you know, obviously the, the culture of winning that uh, they've been able to establish with a lot of good veterans, uh, which is, you know, really, really important. Um, those are those are all key elements from coaching staff to good people around them uh, for these young players to continue to grow and, and feel good about their growth and their development. Dave, where do you think Shane's taken the biggest step as far as this year's camp and uh, his last year's camp? I look at his comfortability and his presence, um, and, and that's that's a pretty that, that's kind of a blanket statement. But um, you know, he uh, he looked like a guy that was free to go and play the game, um, a little bit less stress on him, um, and be, you know, he, he he just you know he was more comfortable in everything that he was doing, and that's hey, that's inherent with being a young guy. You you learn as you go. Uh, this is a hard league. It's a hard league to jump into. Um, and you know you, you have to grow incrementally on, on your own time frame and Shane's doing that he's put put in the work um, you know specifically in terms of when I look at him physically or skill set wise he dug in and had a great summer that was apparent and that's one of the first things in becoming uh, a really good pro is knowing and understanding how to prepare your body um, how to get yourself to a level where you know, you can survive in this league on a daily basis. And, you know, Shane certainly had a great summer. Um, it's a little more of a, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a simpler summer than it is your draft year, especially what he, you know, he had a lot of things going on around him. This summer was a simple summer. He put the work in, and we saw the results of that, and he had a good camp, you know, partially because of that. Marte and Decord kind of stand out, but you had a pair of veterans who needed to come in here and kind of establish themselves. How do you like how Palmer and Dumoulin have done that? Yeah, both guys are, you know, they're sharp guys. They've been around the league a long time, and uh, they know what their role is, uh, and they go out and they perform that consistently on a daily basis. All set? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy the week.